This is the Carina Nebula, as imaged by JWST. Just look at those colours, that texture and structure, and all of those stars. I think it might just be the best one of this first batch of images. This stunning view of the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula is truly something. It shows us brand new stars being born in this gas and dust in the nebula, including loads that we've never seen before. Just look at the resolution improvement compared to the Hubble image of the same patch of sky. Capturing objects in the earliest, rapid stages of star formation is incredibly tough, but JWST's extreme sensitivity and spatial resolution has managed to image them here. Carina is a perfect stellar nursery as it's full of gas and dust the building blocks of stars, and the conditions here are perfect to smash it all together and force it to collapse into stars. You might be more familiar with this old Hubble image of the Carina Nebula, and like me, wondering which part of this image contains the area that JWST has seen. The answer, slightly annoyingly, is nowhere. You see, this image is actually only a very small part of Carina. This is the full Hubble image of the Carina Nebula, and the strip I just showed is only this boxed region in the center. This box contains all of the objects I mentioned in my preview video for the web images, like Eta Carinae, the universe flipping us the bird, and the very hungry caterpillar, none of which are visible in the JWST image. So I guess this leaves two questions. Where is the web region and what's in it? Well, from this full image, the web vista is in the top right corner, as we can see in this beautiful graphic here. You could see the same thing in this other graphic too, both of which I really love. It's really right on the edge of Carina, but when we zoom in, heck, it still looks good. This picture was taken with NERCAM, so it's near infrared light. I know the colors here are false colors worked out from the data, but I cannot get over how good that blue looks. I'll also say that I'm sure YouTube compression doesn't do the picture any favors, so I recommend downloading the full high-res image and exploring it yourselves. Here though, let's now dive in and check out some of the standout features in this awesome shot. The cosmic cliffs are a glittering landscape of star birth on the edge of the massive nebula, which is about 7,500 light years away. So it's a relatively nearby star forming region in our galaxy. And these are the best things that I could find for you. Just in general, I adore the sense of depth and texture. The bubbles, the cavities, the jets, they're all so cool. The infrared light lets us see deeper into the star forming regions than ever before, revealing hundreds of never before seen stars previously hidden from us. Every one of the hundreds or thousands of stars here could host planets, and we really don't know how many worlds are in this photo alone. It really makes you feel small and in awe of the sheer scale of the universe. Our sun, our planet, and even us are made of the same stuff that we can see in this landscape. We see pillars and interesting shapes all over the place, like this thing. Nobody even knows what this one is yet, and that just blows my mind. These giant, hot, young stars at the top are spewing out ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds, eroding and compressing the gas below, causing the awesome curtain edges we see here, and causing the star birth below to begin. Of course, we can't see the ultraviolet radiation, but we can see its effect on the dust here. Interestingly, these same winds that can trigger star formation can also shut it down if they start to blow away too much of the material here, so there's a delicate balance to be found. We also see steam seeming to appear from the top of these celestial mountains, and this is actually hot, ionized gas streaming away due to the intense radiation of all the young stars. And we can also spot protostellar jets and outflows, shown in gold, leaving the dust-encrusted stars. We also got this other shot of the same view, which is the NERCAM data from before, plus MIRI data in the mid-infrared wavelengths. While the colors of the backgrounds might not be as vibrant, just look at the stars we see. The longer mid-infrared light sees deeper into the dust and reveals even more of the stellar population, including a huge range of colors that we just didn't see before. Just look at this one, the tail makes it look like a comet. Over here, we have a surprise double star going on. We also see the same structures as in the other image too. The peaks, the bubbles, the cavities, the weird arches and the effects of the radiation impacting the nebula. It's crazy to think that the peaks in this cosmic mountain range alone are about seven light years high. The scale here is really hard to imagine. I could stare at this all day long and continue to find new, interesting and curious objects within it. As ever, in both of these images, we see countless distant galaxies in the background, again proving that Webb cannot take a blank picture. These are super fun to explore if you have the chance. So. Is this the best image released by Webb so far? 
I think it just might be, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, let me know which one you do think is best if it's not this one. And we can argue about our rankings down there. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.